Well, welcome to today's daily service. We begin with some words from Psalm 55. We'll alternate between me leading us and saying aloud together. Beginning together, Psalm 55, verse 16. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them, because they have no fear of God. And together, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your presence with us, even now as you are enthroned on high. Lord, may we daily, morning, noon, and night, cry out to you in our distress. Hear us now, we pray, and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn now to some words of confession, a chance to be honest with God and to ask for his forgiveness. Most merciful God, we humbly admit that we need your help. We confess that we have wandered from your way, we have done wrong, and we have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us, wipe out our sins, and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of the Spirit, that we may live as disciples of Christ. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. At one point in Jesus' ministry, a crowd of people asked him, Jesus, what are, what, is, what are the works that God requires that we might please him? What can we do to earn his approval might be another way of framing their question. And wonderfully, Jesus replied by saying, this is the work of God, to believe, to simply believe in the one he has sent. If you've done that, friend, your sins are forgiven because of him. Well, this week we've been looking at the Ascension, yesterday being Ascension Day, and Vaughn sharing with us that the ultimate meaning of the Ascension is that there's a Lord on the throne who is ultimately governing all things for the good of his people. We can trust him. But it raises a question. If he's ascended there, what are we to do here? How are we to respond? Well, let's look at how those first disciples respond, responded as we continue the story in Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. I'll just read aloud. You listen in. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. And when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. What are we to do now that the Lord Jesus has ascended? Well, look what they did. We're told that they obeyed Jesus and they left the Mount of Olives where he ascended and they made the Sabbath day's uh, journey back to Jerusalem as he had told them to do. And they gathered in an upper room. Whether or not it was the upper room that they gathered in the night before he went to the cross, we don't know. But there, the, the 11 apostles and many of the other disciples who were followers of Jesus were told uh, Mary and uh, uh, her other children, Jesus' brothers, and, and we would imagine his sisters also were gathered there along with some other women. And what did they do in response to the ascended Lord? Well, we're told that they constantly prayed together. Let's just focus on two of those words. Uh, first, they constantly prayed. Verse 14 again, they all joined together constantly in prayer. And this is what isn't just something they did before the Spirit was given. It's something that they also did after they had received the gift of the Holy Spirit, which they were, at this point in chapter 1, waiting for. 
we're told in chapter uh, 2, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer, even after having received the Holy Spirit. And that word devoted themselves to is the same word translated constantly gave themselves to prayer in, in chapter 1, verse 14. Are you devoting yourself to prayer? You might say, Andrew, I know that's right in my head, I know it's right in my heart, but I'm battling to pray on my own. Well, that brings us to our second word. They prayed together constantly. That's not an incidental word. I'm not sure maybe you've gotten a gym pass before in your life and you get the gym pass and you make the plan and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the gym X number of days a week and I'm gonna pursue this workout plan on the weights or on the cardio that I've devised. And you do it for a while and then it begins to fade off. And eventually months later after realizing you haven't been to the gym, you cancel the membership only perhaps to try it all over again in a year or two's time. I've done that many times if I've done it once. The togetherness is a key aspect. How different it is when you join a sports club. And you know that if you don't show up, if you, if, you, if you don't join in with the rest, that you'll be letting themselves down. You're a part of a group, a part of a team. It's, it's all the more true with God's church. We live the Christian life together. And if you're struggling in prayer individually, instead of dialing down on yourself and lashing yourself, perhaps dial in. Write our office and ask, can I join an online fellowship group? Uh, get on the phone and call a Christian friend if you're exploring uh, the Christian faith. Don't do it alone, do it together. Maybe join us on our Monday evening Christianity Explored nights. Contact the office, we'd love to have you there. They were constantly at prayer together. The Spirit will come and the church will do mighty acts for God. But if the Spirit is what drives the boat of God's church along the sea of uh, God's plan for it, then our prayers together are what hoists the sail. Let's pray together now. We begin with a prayer for God's church. Saying it together, Almighty and eternal God, you alone work great marvels. Send down your gracious spirit on all Christian people, especially our bishops and other pastors and the congregations in their care. Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing, that they may truly praise you. Grant this for the honor of Jesus Christ, our advocate and mediator. Amen. And we take a moment now to bring before God those for whom we're most concerned. And we close our prayers together with this prayer, which will come up on the screen, and you'll see again it alternates between parts that all lead and parts where we'll join it all together. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Send out your light and truth, that we may tell of your saving works. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for we put our trust in you. Let's sing together, O Church, arise.
Well, thanks again so much for joining our daily service. We'll close with these words which Jesus spoke just before he ascended into heaven. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. May it be so. Because of our ascended Lord and the Spirit he poured out and our constantly joining together in prayer, it will be so. Go in peace. Amen.